Shall we pray? Good and gracious God, may all that is you in Christ flow into me, flow into us. May your truth and life fill us. May your body and blood be our food and drink. Keep calling to us, Holy One. Keep calling us home. Until that day where your joy is complete because all your blessed and beloved ones are home in the fullness of your grace. This we pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. You know these stories that I just read, Jesus' parables of the uh, lost coin and the lost sheep. You know those stories because you've lived them one way or another. Anyone who has ever lost their keys, I do it regularly, knows the story. Anybody who's lost their billfold knows the story. Anybody who's ever reached for a credit card that you know exactly where it should be and it's not there, well, that creates a little bit of a wave of cold sweat for some of us that goes down the back of our neck. We know the reaction. It's not there. There's a flash of panic. You look around, searching, hoping to find it, a little bit feverishly, until, with a flood of relief, a rush of relief, you glimpse in a moment what you feared was lost forever. So it goes. Panic, anxious searching, relief, unless you can find it. Well, those elements, those emotions were part of a story that I read in the Chicago Tribune just on Friday. Maybe you read it too. Mary Sneak is a regular columnist with the Chicago Tribune. And she wrote about losing her purse on a day that her car was conking out on her. And when she called the Toyota garage, they said, well, you've got to set your key aside. It must be one of these newfangled cars that I don't know how to start. She had to set her purse outside the car. And then she struggled to get it going. And when it finally started and began to run properly, she was so happy, she drove off, left the purse. And when she realized it was gone, she went back to try to find it. But of course, no luck. Long gone. And a little bit crazed, she did what probably you were thinking needed to be done. She quickly called the credit card company and put a hold on all her cards, figuring that somebody had picked up the purse and somebody was trying to buy expensive clothes at Neiman Marcus. Okay? Couldn't find it. But in the evening darkness, after she got home, parked car was walking in the evening darkness near her home. She heard a voice. Mary? How did somebody know her name? Well, it was the voice of a 17-year-old high school student, a young woman accompanied by her male friend, and they had found Mary Sneak's purse, looked at the address in the billfold, tracked her down, and of course she was relieved to get her purse back. Her billfold, her lip gloss, her credit cards, and her reporter's notes that she needed to write the story she had to get done for the next day's paper. The loss was found, human hearts were lifted into joy, and the story is a little bit like a retelling of Jesus' parable. The lost is found, joy is shared. It's a God thing. Losing, finding, seeking, entering joy, a God thing. The parable is about God and us. And what we should expect of God and what we need. Who is God? God is always better than we think, more gracious than we can imagine, and more present than we know. God is this seeking love, this hungry heart. Seeking those who lose their way and wander away from a life of honor and reverence 
parents and knowing who they are as God's beloved children. God is the seeking love who seeks not just those who are truly lost, but also seeks those dark corners of our own souls and hearts that remain hidden and unredeemed. God is like two 17-year-olds bringing the lost home. With a hungry heart, our Lord looks for us, searches for us, seeking every lost corner of our lives until we're home, rejoicing, sharing the joy of entering the warmth of God's embrace of all we are. Well, those are big and fancy words, but how does this happen? In a million ways, I suppose. You never know how love will find you, touch you, free you, set you free to be truly a human soul again. For the Holy One seeks our hearts in every grace and every beauty we ever see, in every blessing and every gracious smile and every encouraging word, all of that. However seemingly small and insignificant is somehow a sacramental expression of the loving goodness of our God who speaks in every love and every beauty and every grace and speaks too in those times of trouble or pain hungry for us to know the one who is always there for us. Last Sunday, we discussed these three parables at another small group at the second worship hour at 1030 in the conference room. And we just noticed what, what's going on in these little simple stories, these parables of Jesus. And we noticed several things. We saw God's determination. In each parable, the shepherd, the woman, searches, not hoping that, well, maybe they'll find it. But they search until, that's the word, until they find the lost. They're not deterred. They don't give up. They stay at it. They're dogged in their search until they find. And when they find, there is joy, but they don't keep the joy to themselves. That's something else we know. Joy is communal. It's shared. And what that means is that when we gather and we celebrate God's love for us at this table, and we share the peace, this room should be one of the happiest places in your life. For we are the people that love that great love God is, that great seeking love that works in all time and history, and most certainly in the death and resurrection of Christ. That seeking love has found us and gathered us in and seeks to fill every dark and dusty corner of our lives. That love found us and brought us here, and when we leave this place, that love will seek us out in all the places of our lives. And maybe, maybe the truest, best, honest, and most efficacious prayer we might pray as we leave tonight is, Lord, find me. This week, find me. Lord, wherever I go, find me. When I'm lost alone or troubled or confused, find me. When I feel just really good about my life and how things are going, find me then too. Find me. that I may know the love that you are, the love that you have for me, and the love that you somehow have for this crazy world. For God longs and aches and hungers for us. God says to you, there is no place. There is no part of you. There is no part of you I do not want. No lost corner. So dark, or troubled, or shameful, or rejected, or wounded, that I turn away. I want every part of you to touch and heal you and say, Welcome home. For the great seeking love that I am is your home. That's who God is. The seeking love who speaks in many and various ways in the common events of our lives. And we notice when we open our minds and hearts. Monday. 
I sat in the breezeway in front of the house, sheltered from an early morning shower. And there's iron grate in the openings of the breezeway to cover. You can sit out there in the rain unless the wind blows. And I extended my hand through the iron grate in the rain. And raindrops occasionally would glance off my fingers, one plopped in my palm. And it occurred to me, every single drop is a gift. Each one gives life. Each one renews the earth. Each one is intended to awaken awareness of a great love and a great life freely given. Each one told me that life itself and everything within my life was a gift from a very great love I shall never understand. For God speaks and sees. Speaking in raindrops and rainbows, and most certainly the love that God speaks there is the same love that God speaks in the voice of Jesus as he dies on the cross and forgives those who crucified him. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's a very great love indeed. That love of the cross that speaks in every grace and beauty and blessing. And what happens is that when we have a moment of awareness, just a millisecond of awareness, of the love of God present in our lives and present in the world, a second is enough. When we know this love, we repent of every doubt we have about God's goodness. We repent of our failures to love, knowing that sharing this love is really the meaning of what life is. We repent of the ways we judge and look down on others, knowing that we have been touched by a love that wants everyone and every part of us. Thanks be to God. <laughs>